the more the people complained. God was feeding them manna from heaven. They didn't have to cook. They didn't have to worry about what they were going to eat. When they were thirsty, rocks were running out of the water. And these, uh, water running out of the rocks, right. And these people were still complaining. They tired of manna. Manna was something that it just had a, f a taste to it, I guess. It was why it was in your mind because all it was kind of was manna. It was sustaining them yeah. to the point where there they were not any among them that was sick or tired. They I say it wasn't going on them or anything. But they started complaining and they wanted chicken. <laughs> Lord, how oh again? This is in the world. But they wanted chicken. And so we have to be careful. You know, we have to thank God again for the storm that passed us. It's a miracle. Because I was watching the news and it was tripping me out, amazing me that the newsmen couldn't even tell you what was going on. I heard them saying at one point, they said outright, we don't know. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out, you have planes flying in the air, you have all kind of tracking stuff, electronic stuff, and you're going to tell me you don't know? Of course they don't know. There were men and women of God that were speaking to that storm. And they were commanding and they were declaring and they were decreeing that in the name of Jesus, you're not going to come here. You're not going to do no destruction in this land because there are men and women of God that know who they are and whose they are. And they know the power and the might in which they walk in. And so we have to get to the place where we know. As Pastor just spoke about the, the um, unity and that place where nobody signed up for the homosexual thing. And it just come to my mind this Genesis 11, 6 spoke about that. Genesis 11, 6 said, these people speak the same language. And he said they speak the same language, and it wasn't just the word, but it was on one accord. We're talking about when they were building the Tower of ba Babel. They, spoke, they speak the same language, therefore nothing, nothing will be impossible to them. And this is what happened with the whole thing that the, the, they were able to push through to, this, to the um, Congress and, and actually get this thing passed. They spoke the same language. They came together in unity and they and this withstood over years and years. They persevered speaking the same language and pushing this thing through. And God is saying to the church today that He needs for the church to speak the same language. Lord help me. They say in the message. Yet. But the Lord needs for the church to speak the same language. Because in our unity is our strength. And as Pastor said, the unity is the most important thing that, that will bind us together and that will protect us and keep us as a church, as a body of Christ. And I believe sincerely in my heart that this church has a calling and it has a purpose and it has a special anointing on it. And all we have to do is look at the man of God that's at the helm and you know it's radical. And you know it's crazy, you know, ordinary anointing on this church. Understand me? And if we could only get in unity as a body, if we could only get to the place, Lord God help me this morning. Where we can just look out for each other, have each other's back, be happy when one of us are doing well, be happy when our children are doing well, one for another, support them, pray for them, pray for each other, love each other, and see the power of God move in this building. See this building, see this church take this island by storm. Why? Because they know that when the blind walks up in here, they go down seeing. Because that is the anointing that is on this church. It's not an ordinary church. We have the Methodist church and we have the Catholic church and they're doing a great work. And they, we can't knock them. The work they're doing is awesome. They're, they're doing the, the gifts of help. They're feeding the sick. They're clothing the hungry. And they're doing their work. 
And that's called for us to do also, but our anointing is in the miraculous. It's radical, it's crazy, it's demon busting. It's what's, what, what, what the Holy Spirit has rested on our man of God. And so we have to get in line and, 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 and get the petty stuff aside. And I'm pointing fingers at myself also because I know I'm not perfect. And sometimes the enemy tries to do this. I, 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 Pastor spoke about Africa and it's like, I got this iPad. My daughter bought me this iPad and it's like I addicted. Because it's like, my grandson I was asking me about my, why I always got this thing in my head. It's like, it's like you're in a candy store. And now I find myself more gravitating to the It's so much Africans that are preaching the word of God. So much, you'll be surprised at how the word of God has spread through that continent. Those guys ain't playing, you know. They're moving in the power. This Chris, Chris Ocker. I, this man is awesome. You think you think Benny Hinn, how he used to, I see this man just, the whole congregation, all cool. He just walked by and his shadow touched a man. You think it only happened in the Bible, but it's happening today in Africa. Now, how are they going to come from behind and get ahead of America in the anointing? And more and more of those, we have, we have Bishop Duncan Williams. He's the one that why we can't get no hurricane come here no more. Because I remember he went on the radio and he commanded the storms that not to come to this place. And since he did that, it hasn't happened. These men are walking in the power and the might of the Most High God because it's real. But we here in America, we got it so good. They ain't got no car sometimes, they're walking for miles just to get to church. You know, they're they walking for miles to get to church because they know when they get to church, they're going to be fed. They, they're feeling the power. Mm, God loves us so much. John 3, 16, as he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, and he stopped loving us. And we have to remember and we have to realize one thing, that sin entered into the world by one man. And through one man, the whole world became sinful. It wasn't an act of our own. And this is where we just, we just really mess ourselves up with this sin issue. Because the enemy uses it to really burden us down. But sin is not an issue anymore in, in Jesus. In his book, he already dealt with it. That's why he sent his son. The sin issue has been dealt with. Just as, as true one man sin was entered into the world, true one man, the, the mighty Jesus Christ, sin has been dealt a blow. That whosoever will don't have to worry once they're under that anointing. Sin has no dominion over them. He has, it has no dominion over us as a people, as believers. It doesn't mean we may not slip sometime. But we have to know that it has no dominion over us. And we have to know that we can walk in victory because the word declared that we can. And the, the, Jesus Christ ain't a liar. So if you say we can walk in victory, then we have to pursue and live. And, and, and that's the goal that we go towards. And even if anything happens along the way, we keep our eyes on that goal. You don't leave yourself think that, oh, I just messed up so bad. So me coming here no more. I and mean, that's what the enemy want. You see what happens? He works in your mind in this way. And then next thing you find you're not coming. And it's like, I will listen to Chris again. And he, he made an analogy like this. It's like how lions work and pray. They'll see a whole, a whole herd of elephants. And they know they can't get them by themselves. So they're watching and they're coping. They're looking for the one that's straying away by himself. So now they can just pray on him and jump on him. And so sometimes when we find ourselves straying away, sometimes it's legitimate issues that make you don't even want to come around anymore. But you have to be careful because the enemy is in that. And when he gets you out and you own and you're thinking, well, I don't want to deal with this. And that, while you're there thinking them kind of stuff, his plan is to try and kill and steal and destroy. Because the anointing that's on your life, he wants it, he wants to stop it. 
And so we have to be careful not to forsake the fellowship of the saints among each other. For in this fellowship of the saints among each other is our strength, is our comfort, is our protection. As it should be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And maybe I could get to the message. Hallelujah. One more thing I got to touch on before I get to the message. One more thing. Moses again. Powerful man of God. And, and the thing when you have this kind of anointing and you speak thing, it comes to pass. And sometimes, what, look what happened with Moses, with Miriam. It, this is his sister, you know. Numbers 12.1. Numbers 12.1. I'm not going to go to it. You can check it out. But I'm going to just give a quick little thing of it. And 12.10. And Miriam and, and Aaron, Moses' family, they, they murmured and they complained. And they, they was fussing and they was complaining against Moses, the anointed one. The one that Jesus Christ, that God himself chose to be the leader. They was complaining and they were like, why does God only speak to Moses? I'm sure he also speaks to us also. So we don't have to listen to what Moses, this was the kind of attitude they were having. Now Moses now wasn't saying anything, but God heard them murmuring. And he dealt with them severely. When Miriam ended up becoming leprous. She, she was going to die if Moses did not intercede for Jesus, for the Lord to save her life. And so we have to be careful. Because God is watching and hearing. And the word of God clearly declares, touch not mine anointed, nor do his prophets any harm. So if you're back talking and you're, and you're back biting and you're whatnot, you could be really bringing stuff on yourself. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But it's the word of God that's resting my spirit this morning. And I believe it's a word for all of us this morning. Sometimes we become discontent because none of us isn't perfect. And sometimes we become frustrated. But we have to be careful with our mouth. And we have, to, we have to gird up the man of God. We have to gird up each other. Even in the areas where it's not perfect. Because we have made a commitment to be in this house. And some of us are here for a long time. We like family and we don't even realize it. Because we've been together so long. And I sincerely love you all. And, and we have a connection in the spirit. As a body of Christ, and as a church in particular, we do have a connection. Whether we want to admit it or not, we really need to get in the spirit to see that connection in the spirit. And we need to get out of the flesh. Because in the flesh, we could get into a lot of isms. We could get into jealousy. We could get into to envy. We could get into backbiting. We could get into petty frustrations. And the enemy have a tendency and he have a, a gift. He have, an, he have an ability to place thoughts in your mind. Satanic suggestions. Where, where, where one person might do something, but he magnify it so in your mind. Because that, that's like, that person do something that offend you, upset you, but now this is Satan's chance now to magnify it. And, and the thoughts he's going to start throwing in your mind, I don't want to be wrong them people no more. I don't want to... Yeah, 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 yeah. And his whole objective is to, again, like I said, get you out by yourself. And then when all hell breaking loose, you're trying to figure out when the world happening. Because he seeks to destroy and devour us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before I get into the word, Father God, I just would like to give you all honor and glory. Submit myself to you, Lord God, to be used, Father God, and an oracle, Father God. I ask you, Lord God, to let only that which you would have your people here this morning, that which you would have to edify, to educate, to teach, to build up, to heal your people come forth out of, of my mouth this morning. Anything that is not of you, Lord God, I, I ask you to arrest it even though and let, let it not have any place in, in me this morning. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is called the word of God. The word of God. 
the word of God. Let's start with Isaiah 55, 10, if I can find that. The word of God is so awesome. So we're going to look at it, and we're going to just feed on it a little bit because it is food. And that's why if you're in churches and they're not giving you the word of God, you can't eat, you can't grow, you can't develop. But we are in a church where not only have we been getting the word of God, but we have been witnessing the power of God on a level that is undeniable that he is real. We have been experiencing the power of God in this house on a level where we cannot deny the fact that Jesus Christ still does miracles today. We cannot deny the fact that Jesus Christ is real. The word is real because we have experienced it in this house. We have seen healings taking place. We have seen miracles break forth. We have, I have seen a, a fat woman lose weight right in front of my eyes. And then we see these things and then we go back to our normal routines. But we, because we get caught up in the ism, the regular things of life. But we really have to make a conscious effort to sometimes sit and meditate on the real power of this God that we serve after experiencing it some of us has came in here sick and had our hands laid on us and we left healed so we know he's real we've seen people come up here and they don't never been in this place before and they could call us out by names and they could tell us they're moving and in, in the in the uh, not the giftings of the spirit they're telling us about our brother telling us about our sister they're prophesying over us and telling us things it has to be god and after we experience all these things, to just go back down the steps and go back into our regular thing and not spend time pondering and meditating on the power and the mightiness and the sovereignty of God. It's really something we have to look at. Again, me, myself, sometimes get caught up. I'm in the job with the kids, totty of them balling out one time and I try to get them quiet. And so it just, it's just human. But we have to really stop and, and make time to just sit and just focus and meditate. As the word of God said, meditate on my words. Meditate on them. I said Isaiah 55, 10. The word of God. After we don't read so much stuff about the word of God this morning, I believe you're going to leave here full and impregnated with the word of God. Not just as words on a page, but actually feeling the word of God vibrating and, and just pulsating in your very spirit, man. Hallelujah. 55.10 For the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and return it not there either, but water it the earth, and making it, make it, it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the water. 11 is the key. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherefore I sent it. Now, why did he preface um, verse 11 with verse 10? What he's saying is that just as the rain is normal and natural, he, he, he's... he's Equating it to a natural phenomenon, a natural activity that you know is going to rain. Sooner or later it's going to rain. You know if you jump, the, the law of gravity, gravity is going to pull you down. If you go on a boat on the water, it's going to float. It's natural. Ain't no mystery about it. And so what he's saying in verse 11, ain't no mystery about my word. You have to the same way you know that you know that you know that the boat going to float on water and let's say if I hold in it, that is going to rain, that trees are going to grow, apple tree is going to bear apple, a sugar apple tree is going to bear sugar apple. The Lord is saying it's the same way you have to get my word to know that my word is not going to return unto me void after it's been sent forth on your behalf. And you have to know that you know that you know that it's on the same level. It's a natural phenomenon in the spirit. But now we have to talk about the spirit somewhere along the line because that's where we mess up. For we are spirit. 
We live in a body and we have a soul, but we are, our real identity is spirit. And we get caught up in life dealing with everything else, giving everything else the priority in our life except the one that who we really are, which is our spirit man. That's the one that's going to live forever. Hallelujah. I understand we have to eat, we have to, we have to take care of our children, but it's all in the word. Principles to do these things. Kingdom principles is all in the word. So when we go away from the word to try to do these things, we're making it harder for ourselves. But if we do it using the principles of the word that he says here, he, this is a big key right here. It's not going to return void. That's a principle right there. That word is telling you it's not going to return void. Imagine that. Hallelujah. John 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Two. The same was in the beginning with God. So he, the word has always been there from in the beginning. Hallelujah. And so we can use the word. There are scriptures in the word that deal with every issue, every situation that we have to deal with in life. Of a food that we need to eat. Matthew 4.4 4 speaks about it. It is written. A man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So if we're not feeding ourselves with the mouth of God, we might be eating a lot of steak, but we ain't living. Our body getting fat and we think we live in, but we live in. The word of God telling you we cannot live on bread alone. Bread meaning the regular food that we eat. The key being that the main thing we need is the word of God to feed our spirit man. Hallelujah. John 6, 51 states, I am the living bread that come down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Hallelujah. He's the living bread. Hallelujah. This bread came down from heaven. And he desires for us to eat of him. His word that we will live forever. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 3.15 Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you on knowledge and understanding. And so shepherds come to feed us on knowledge and understanding. Now, they're making an analogy to, to the word of God now being knowledge and understanding, being food. So the more knowledge and understanding we get of the, of the word of God, the more our spirit man gets fed, the more we develop spiritually. And again, we have to realize, I can't, I can't say too much, that the more our spirit is fed and developed, everything else is going to fall in place. So I submit to you that if we focus our lives on developing our spirit man, we won't have a problem with the other stuff. Because God is going to take care of us. Hallelujah. Hebrew 5, 12 to 14 states, For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers. This is a kind of a hard one. You have need that one teach you again, which be... The first principles of the oracles of God. Let me just say that again. When for the time you ought to be teachers. The word of God in Hebrew 5 and 12 is saying that some of us ought to be teachers. Yet we have need that we be taught again. Which be the first principle of the oracles of God. And because such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So milk being the word of God and strong meat again being the word of God on a deeper level. Hallelujah. Verse 13 states, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is, he is a, a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see where he wants us to get to? To a place where we're walking in the gifts of the spirit to the point where we're discerning things in the spirit, good and evil. And this comes from eating 
of the word of God, again, feeding on it and getting to the point as you, as you feed on it and you eat and you study and it gets more and more your spirit, man, you start to, to see things in the spirit. You start to know things in the spirit. You start to discern, I shouldn't go this way. I shouldn't invest in this. I shouldn't buy this right now. Hold back on this. Buy this. This is the time. And, and the Holy Spirit leads you. And this is where the Lord try, is trying to get us. And that's food. There's so many other scriptures that deal with just food. The spiritual word of God as food. It's also, of course, salvation. John 3, 16, 17 says, again, I said it earlier, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever will can come unto him and be saved. John 1, 12, But to all who did receive him, who believe in him, in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Romans 6, we deal with salvation now. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old man has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I want to camp out on that one for a little bit because that has, that has so much stuff in it. If we are in Christ, we are a new creation. The old has passed. Behold, the new has come. And, and that's why the words speak about us being babes and, and growing and so forth. When we just come to Christ, we are a new creation like a baby. And you know, a baby stumbles sometimes. A baby can't walk. And they have to be fed milk and they develop and they grow. And the, ob the objective as a believer is to drink that milk and drink that milk and get to a point where you're now eating meat and becoming as a son of God, becoming as, as one that can stand in the gap for others, becoming as one that can rightly divide and, and use that word. So we don't want to always just be on the level where we're just drinking milk. Hallelujah. So this new creation that we, we have become is so awesome because there's so much I could, I could spend the whole day just talking about it and just touching it a little bit more. Because now as we have become this new creation in Christ, we're not walking in, 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 in a life where sin have any kind of dominion over us anymore. You're a babe. You just, you just got touched. The Holy Spirit touched you and you accept Christ. Bram. And you don't realize half of what happened just in that little instance there. You're now plucked out of the kingdom of darkness. You're now placed in the marvelous kingdom of light. You now have eternal life. You understand? The, the great thing that are happening. Eh? And, and, and I mean, we have to stop and ponder these things. You don't just come and say, yes, I accept Christ. And you go back and it's this stuff that's happening in the spirit realm. You are no more yourself. You are no creation. You're like a babe. You might be 99 years old and just accept Christ. You're a babe. Just a new baby. Just born. And Jesus Christ just watching you and just loving you. Because he loves us so much. And so excited to see this new child of his own. And as we eat and we feed and we start to develop that relationship. And that's the whole key about the word too. As you spend time in it, you, you develop a relationship with the Most High God where you feel His, you feel this love, you feel this tingling. You could feel this tugging sometimes. You just come home and it's like, come, come spend some time with me. And you want to get out someplace and read your Bible. And, and it's just so awesome to have that relationship together and that, at that point with Him where it's a relationship. And again, the body of Christ is so important in nurturing the baby Christians. Let's all examine ourselves right now and ask ourselves. And if we have, ask God to forgive us and let's try and do better. If we have been responsible for some that came as babes and in some way, a thronging face, a cussing word, it shouldn't happen, but these things are happening. A bad attitude. Something negative. That just caused them to just don't even come back. This newborn babe of Christ. 
that need to be nurtured and loved. The word of God tells us it's by our love one for another that the world is going to know that we are in fact children of God. As much as we're moving in the gifts and the spirit, it's the love is the, is the chief thing. And, 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 and if, if we come out and announce that causing our brethren to, to not be able to develop and have to leave, and, and again, they don't have to leave, but the enemy, again, is going to be playing in the mind because he see them get saved. His whole thing is to get them out. You think he want them in God's kingdom? And we have to get out of the flesh to the point where we could see the biggest picture and see the spirit realm and know our responsibility. Some of us have been here a long time. We ought to know better. We had to not to nurture the, the, the young babes. We had to not to, to show them that special love. We had to know to look out for them. We had to take them under our wings and love them. Lord, help us. Father God. Ashi! Ashaha! Because we're going to be responsible. For that soul. Sometimes they come and we see them moving and we, mo and, and we feel threatened that they might take some position. We are not in no position. I've come to a place where I don't have to. I, it, you know, there's a word that says something about it's better to be a gatekeeper in the house of God than to be a king and a throne in, in the world. No, no, you, I could go, you could go out in the wall and you could make even money and get the best car and everybody here. Yeah. And you're living good. You might have 10 women and, and you're living that life and you, you, you're big. But I come to understand and realize within my spirit, man, that I rather am the garbage in the house of God. Because I have seen in the spirit realm and I know the reality of this. It's the real thing. That's the reality that we have to come to understand. That it's a real thing and we can in fact go to hell. We can in fact die and have eternal damnation. Ah! Because it's real. But even the garbage cleaner in the house of God is going to be in pearly gates. Ash here! And the house is stirred up for us, already built and waiting for us. Mm. And so we try and we try to do good, not because we're trying to become saved. We're trying to do the right thing because we love God. And the more we love him, the more we're going to try to do right. Because we love him. Because our works, in fact, in, in, in Jesus' face, in God's face, is like filthy rags. Our righteousness unto ourselves is nothing but filthy rags. It's only God's gift and his grace that has saved each and every one of us. In nothing we could do that could make him love us anymore. Good or bad. Once we've accepted Christ and we've asked him to forgive him our sins and we've, we've gotten into the kingdom, that's what it is. It's a done deal. And that deal is so awesome. I could spend, I could spend the rest of the year talking about this deal. What he have done, what he have given so that we could receive. The righteousness that he have given up. He have become poor so that we could become rich. It's so much that he has done. This, this is a real deal. Real, real deal. So we have salvation in the kingdom of God. We have food in the kingdom of God. In the word of God. Let me move on to wisdom. In the word of God there's wisdom. We're going to look at some scriptures that touch on wisdom. And we should, up, we should go and push toward trying to obtain these things. Proverbs, Proverbs 4, 7, 8 states, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Wisdom. And this wisdom is all in the word of God. James.